This scenario is an example of a maxillary Kennedy class 1 arch. The class 1 arch has unbounded edentulous spaces on both sides of the arch posterior to the remaining maxillary teeth. In this particular case, teeth 6 through 11 remain. When closed, the patient exhibits a class 2 malocclusion with excessive vertical overlap of the maxillary teeth. This commonly will present challenges to the placement of rest seats and major connector. The scenario does not tell us how many remaining teeth are in the mandible. Various other factors from the clinical examination are listed. The periodontium is sound. No caries is noted, nor are there any existing restorations. The patient is not aesthetic conscious, and although finances are not a concern, the patient does not desire implants. The vibrating line is determined, and the third molars will not be replaced. Areas of habitual contact are noted with articulating paper. Diagnostic casts are required and mounted correctly. The maxillary cast is surveyed to determine guiding planes, retentive areas, areas of interference and aesthetics, as well as the position of the height of contour. No interferences to a path of placement are noted. Contours of abutment teeth are acceptable. The articulated casts are examined to visualize the amount of vertical space for posterior teeth and rest seat placement. Tuberosity reduction may be indicated if spacing and undercuts are problematic. Several possibilities exist, depending on the actual spatial relationship of the teeth. One may consider a restoration of vertical dimension to create space, enameloplasty of the mandibular teeth, or both. Selection of abutments. The cuspids are ideal abutments in this case, with good axial alignment, with no previous restorations. Short guiding planes on these teeth will define the path of insertion. These teeth will also provide retention and stabilization. The occlusion however, poses difficulty in the selection of rest seats. It may be possible to use ball rests on the mesial aspect of 6 and 11. The minor connector is positioned to live in the adjacent embrasure, thus avoiding the areas of habitual contact. Placement of the rest seats defines the fulcrum line. The palate may act as a third rest, particularly if the tissue is firm and the palate is of a broad, flat configuration. The major connector is selected. A general rule of thumb is to increase palatal coverage as tooth support weakens. However, examination of the patient's prior partial denture, if any, will be useful in selection of the major connector. In this diagram, a palatal plate major connector shown. As in all maxillary major connectors it should be extensive enough to cover the maxillary tuberosities. It is terminated at, or anterior to the vibrating line. A U-shaped modification may be employed in the case of active gag reflex. Selection of the base and retentive elements is based on the amount of vertical space present and the potential for relining. Here both ladder and metal base are used. The tuberosity may be covered with metal in cases of minimal space. Metal teeth with buccal aesthetic facing may be employed, if acrylic teeth cannot be placed. Retention, if mesial, may be provided with wrought wire. If distal, a modified T may be used. The modified T is advantageous in this case. In general, Retention placed adjacent to the edentulous area, is more efficient, and in this case, provides some indirect retention. Additional indirect retention may be possible by plating the maxillary anterior teeth. Enameloplasty of the mandibular teeth may be required. If speaking space permits, restoration of vertical dimension would be very advantageous, and should be considered at the treatment planning phase. Such vertical opening would allow freedom of movement for the mandible, as well as space for components.